Welcome back to Miss Joan Uncut with me, your host, Miss Joan, back with a, another video to talk my ish. Mm -hmm. I first want to thank all my subscribers, new and current. I really appreciate you entrusting in me to bring you commentary. Y'all see how I did that, right? Uh -huh. And you know how we do over here? We spectate. We do not participate in any drama of any kind. We don't got time unless we got to put a bitch in her place. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and get into it. You know how we do. Baby, look, Dumb and Dumber was over there. Sorry, guys. TJ and Jack was over there cackling, chat, just cackling away. So we're going to jump into it. There's a lot of notes. I'm going to be flying past these. But trust me, we're going to we gonna get to where we need to get to. Okay. Okay, so while I was minding my business today on YouTube, I noticed, noticed Kimmy went live. And when she went live, she was automatically like, where TJ ass is, bring that ass here, boy. And I'm like, damn, what TJ do? So as I'm running around these YouTube streets trying to find out, I go to YouTube, I go to uh, TJ's channel, nothing's there. Then I go to Jaguars, right? And she did put out a whole recording of her and TJ. So that's what we're going to be talking about to that. Okay. They pretty much reuniting, talking behind the scenes, cackling at the mouth. So let's discuss it. So as the call pretty much starts, they automatically discussing how uh, Jag wants to know why TJ has not agreed to do real life uh, blue couch. Right. Because if you don't know. Um, a couple days ago, while TJ was live, the guy who does the Blue Couch Real Life Productions, he hit her panel. And But not too long after the Jag, they hit it like at the same time. So I think that was a setup. I think they both, uh, the Real Life and Jag, decided to hit TJ panel together. Because Jag was in Dallas, but she was outside. And he was inside. And she, I was just like, it's just no coincidence that these two hit the panel at the same time okay so that was all a play that was all a play so then tj claims that she doesn't want anything from jack and that she doesn't want any chaos or confusion right mm -hmm, girl okay show sure you right 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 but then tj says that you know well jack allowed kimmy to come in between them when it came to some invite in vegas jack then goes to ask well how did i allow kimmy to do anything and stated, well, you the one, you and Kimmy are the ones that's friends. TJ responds, like, no, that's your friend. You called her every chance you got. Mm -hmm. So then Jack goes to say she doesn't understand why she would turn down a chance with real life. That way she doesn't have to keep begging for a hotel room every night. Child, when I said that choked up, when I said that choked up, TJ, I said, mm. So then TJ, all she could say was, excuse me, he didn't offer me anything. So then Jack says, you know, you know, when TJ in real life was on the phone, right? Now, that's what I'm led to believe that someone called. I'm not sure if she called him or he called her. But Jags pretty much went ahead and said that he felt that TJ was being suspicious. Of course, TJ being TJ, baby, she gets defensive as she always do. Mm hmm. Real defensive. And she goes, well, you know, I wasn't um, being suspicious. You know, I just had a question. So then Jack goes to states where like, well, you know, if you need help, help is available. And TJ goes like, exactly. So you taught me better than that. What the hell did Jack teach you other than be a professional bum? Am I missing something? Are we supposed to believe Jack gives out real life lessons? Okay. Okay. All right. 
Anyway, <laughs> Jack then responds, well, you always take the money. Her words, not mine. TJ reiterates that she can't take the money, especially if someone hasn't offered her anything. Yeah, I don't know why we would want to hear TJ's story, but okay. So then I'm like, Jack fishing for information because the way she was asking questions, you could tell she's just trying to get something out of TJ. She was using TJ as usual, but TJ being a silly, silly clown she is. Uh huh. Y'all figure out why I, I have a little smoke for TJ. Uh huh. So then Jack goes to say that she's been dealing with the troll farm. TJ go has the response that she's over them and that they be on some weird shit. Girl, they are the troll farm, but whatever. Jack then asks TJ if she's going to really tell her who Danny is. TJ responds that she wish she knew and then she wish she could unmask her and send her ass to jail. Child, when I say Danny got under their skin, Jag is obsessed with Danny. I'm just going to put that out there. If you listen to the recording, you'll hear it for yourself. TJ responds that she wished she could unmask her. So then those, these two just got the cackling one and one about how Danny did too much in both their lives and how everybody that's like on YouTube does too much. It's funny how they're the victims. They come up here and they talk mad shit, right? They, they sit up here and it was on live. You remember TJ and Jag together. You remember how much shit TJ was talking when people was trying to give her a heads up and yet she wanted to defend Jag and so now her ass in the trash with Jag. Mm -hmm. So then um, Jag goes to add that the troll farm are the ones who swatted did not. Now, I'm not going to keep saying his name because he mentioned a few times. So we're going to call his ass Bruno. If you don't know who Bruno is, Google, we don't talk about Bruno the movie Encanto. We don't talk about Bruno over here. Again, I was never trained to deal with that type of crazy. Okay. So then TJ stands on pretty much because Jack's like, well, you the one who was saying that I got us swatted. TJ stands on what she said and say, Jack, I do believe you got us swatted. You know what I'm saying? She was like, I caught a lot of heat for defending you, trusting you, and how she, and then TJ say how she walked away from everything to be with her. Who fault was that? Ugh, like, girl, you made that choice, dummy. Mm -hmm, dumb and dumber. <laughs> so the Jack goes to says that it's funny because TJ also have called her a liar. TJ goes to say, well, you have lied sometimes. Jack says, you know, I'm not a liar. TJ goes, well, what the hell do you call it? I said the hell part. Mm -hmm. But she says, what do you call it? This mohawk wearing skank goes to say she's a beautiful communicator and that she skilled the lies. The mother, the lies, child. Ain't nothing beautiful about her. I'm just saying. <laughs> so then Jack asks if Naisha is going to keep, baby, when she bring up Naisha, Naisha is TJ's kryptonite. When I say if you want to upset TJ, bring up Naisha. Okay, TJ abruptly says, oh my God, and starts laughing. TJ then responds, and I quote, that fucking bitch, she, she, um, she was like, that fucking bitch, and that she would wish Naisha would move on. Her words, not mine. Jack then asked her, well, what's this I'm hearing about you stole some social security numbers? TJ's goes, and I quote, I ain't still shit from no motherfucking body. Fuck Naisha. And I quote her words, not mine. Now I start remembering, didn't Aisha say in the last time they had a bump in that keep her name out your mouth, TJ? <laughs> TJ respond, girl, that's on you. Mm -hmm. She already told all your business, crackhead. Um, excuse me, sorry, did y'all hear that? Um, <laughs> so TJ adds that those 11 years were the 11 years of hell. And though they didn't work out, this is the most peace she's ever had. But I come to think of it like, well, then how come Naisha's over there flourishing and TJ's begging for money to stay another night in a hotel? Now, let me break this down real quick. We saw what TJ did to Naisha, but we didn't see what Naisha did to TJ. So we can't really say or feel any way towards Naisha because all we see is what we've seen on YouTube. But I find it funny. Mm-hmm. I find it real funny how once TJ left, 
Naisha went and got another place. She got a job. Her kids and her doing well. You could tell the girl hair stay done. Nail stay done. Stay with a cute outfit. But TJ's in a hotel driving a huffy bike. I'm sorry, riding, riding a huffy bike. And literally eating nothing but fast food, takeout food. Have y'all seen her body? Her, the weight she put on her stomach? She's got a jag stomach, y'all. Mm-hmm. And pretty much, um, now you're just doing better. And so the universe is showing us. Because I feel like if you were such this amazing person, why, why aren't you blessed with more, TJ? Why are you struggling? Why are you looking over your shoulder, scary cat? But I digress. So then Jack Slewmouth as at, well, you know, Ta Naisha is a destroyer. And TJ goes, that was perfect, Jack. That was the perfect name you got her. Boo. It didn't stick. And I'm like the audacity of these two. Both these bitch homeless bums living from pillar to post. They're talking shit about everybody. Those of us who are flourishing in life and doing better is worse than them. Child. What's it? The grander of delusion? Delusion grander? Child. So then TJ goes to say, well, I don't understand why you trust she stopped and caught herself but jack like no i'll go ahead and ask and she's like well i don't see why how you trusted that nigga big homie jack says well i never did trust him that's why i recorded him and if i was really in love with him why would i put out that video tj like true 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 oh, pick me ass bitch so then tj says that she didn't see the video because jack asked her did you see the video with the big homie swinging his dick like a helicopter <laughs> and tj like she's obsessed child she is a dick crazy woman. So TJ goes to say that no, she did not see the video of her and Big Homie. So then TJ asks, you know, is you really going to finally tell me what you did to me in the ambulance? And Jack pauses and says, it doesn't matter. And they're like, it does matter. I'm like, y'all bitch is weird. So I'm like, yeah, you could tell these two got chemistry. They have something. Because they, they the way they spoke with each other, it's like they never skipped a beat. Which leads me to believe that these bitches always been talking behind scene. And you'll see why I said that. So then TJ keeps giving Jag praise. Like, well, I learned from the best. And I'm like, girl, what you, you mean it so like, TJ, you full of shit too? Literally? And figurative, figuratively speaking, like you're full of shit too. Because if you learn anything from Jag, you learn to be full of shit and to beg. And it seems like your begging ain't begging. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So then Jag goes to say that she's glad that she took some things from the from their time being together. And that she's a teacher. Bitch, you are the teacher how to get to hell on a first plane ticket, girl. If y'all learning anything from her, I'm worried about you. I really am. TJ then tells that she sees Jack in a different light than everyone else. You know, how she sees that Jack is really smart and she has all this knowledge and she has all these things about her that is so amazing and womp, 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 Bitch, nope. Mm-mm. Nope. That's crazy. <laughs> so then TJ tells Jack that she sees her in a different way. Jack goes back to asking about Danny. This one I say she's obsessed with Danny because she keeps diverting this conversation back and back and back to Danny. So she says, you know, go back to asking about Danny and how, you know, Danny's going to, you know, uh, she, Danny's going to get people killed. And I'm like, girl, it's, it's really not that. It's not that deep. I don't think it's came down to the point where somebody getting hurt, Jack. You're being a bit dramatic per usual. Mm-hmm. TJ says that she really knew who Danny TJ says if she really knew who Danny was she would really tell Jack Stu Pigeon Jack wanted to know who was the man and the woman who wanted to go who wanted TJ to go to Vegas TJ then says and laughs uh -huh, well I'll tell you once I leave the hotel TJ then says that Danny is the one who outed where she stays the hotel she's in that Danny was calling the front desk and T while she was live so TJ decided to go to the front desk take the phone from the person at the front desk answered the phone and she spoke to Danny directly Jag then of course mentions me Child, I don't know how but I got in this I got in this shit <sighs> So pretty much, let me just address this real quick because there's nothing to stand on it too long, child. Jag then says that I'm incoming opinion, child. She goes to say that I'm incoming opinion 
and how I'm scared of baby D and how I didn't make it in the beef sector. By the way, I never made content on the beef sector. I don't shit where I eat. That's where I go to lay low. That's where I go to chill and hang out. Why would I do commentary in a place it caused chaos in a place where I'm actually relaxing? You dumb bitch. But anyway, and then she goes to how to say I'm an Avenger, how I started doing JAG content. It didn't do well. And then I left and then I came back and then I came back as incoming, but then like incoming left and now I'm back. And girl, it was it was weird. It was strange. I am not incoming. I'm sure y'all know that. But what really got me was how I went to TJ's panel and I was very gracious and I was very nice and I was very respectful to TJ, right? And I didn't like be weird or nothing. And this bitch sitting up there like, for real? Nah, she's not Jag. What? So then Jag makes this whole big deal about how I don't go live. And that she said that she want me to go live so that she can hit my panel and she wants me to cam up so she can do so I can directly tell her how I feel in her face. Jack, bitch, you will never grace my panel. Bitch, I will never, ever, ever allow you. Bitch, your, your channels are already hitting from my page, girl. You will never be able to hit my panel. See, you like to hit people's panels and try to curse them out and tell them, bitch, I don't argue with other people's children. I don't go back and forth with other people's children. And bitch, now that I know that you are eager to hit my link, when I do go live, you will never, ever, ever hit my shit. Know that. Know that, bitch. Ever. And TJ up there, like, she's like, yeah. And she made a post of me coughing. She's like, you made, and TJ, like, she made a cough of you posting. These bitches to talk about anything. So, TJ, I want you to remember that. That us bitches will talk about anything. Because, bitch, I am going to talk about something. Mm-hmm. See, I tagged you and I removed that tag because one of my subscribers let me know, like, hey. And it, it made me think, like, let me step back. Let me not go too hard. Oh, but, bitch, I'm getting at that ass, though. Just know that. Anyway, we move it right along. So then, by the way, I have no problem getting on camera. I have a whole YouTube channel with me doing locks. I'm from the lock sector. And I have a video up with me doing Tokyo Tony content about Jay. So, and I'm on camera. So, <laughs> try again, bitch. Try again. So then Jack goes to discuss Big Homie and how he has a restraining order on her. Child, and they get the laughing about it like the shit's a joke. But bitch, if they catch your ass, they gonna catch your ass. So then TJ said that she knew that Sip, Big Homie was a bitch. Her words, not mine. And how, because of how he kept her name in his um, how he kept her name in his mouth. That's what she said. Now I mean, always oh, talking shit, scary bitch. So then Jack goes to uh, explain how Sip was engaged to someone that he bought a ring for and they was together and then he put her through school and everything, but that she ended up leaving him for a stud. And that is the reason why Sip hated TJ. That's why y'all don't tell Jack y'all business. And I'm pretty sure that's not why she didn't like, I'm pretty sure that's not why big homie didn't like TJ. None of us like TJ. I tried being nice to TJ. You saw what that shit just got me. And I know people like, well, she, she didn't say nothing really wrong. The bitch agreed to it. TJ met me. I hit her link. She saw how pleasant I was. Yet she, she went along with the bullshit with Jag. So fuck TJ. I unsubscribed from that hoe. Fuck her. That bitch knew exactly. She knew I didn't do no uploads. She don't go live. The bitch was commenting on some of my posts. She know I don't go live. The fuck? I can't stand a fake phony bitch. Anyway. So then um, I'm like, well, girl, let's talk about how Guma left your ass to rot in jail. Since you want to talk about sipping his shit, girl. Let's talk about how when you went to jail, Guma tried to have your ass committed and then left your ass and ran. That's the second man that ran from you, isn't it, Jack? That we know of online. Goomba and Sip, they ran, girl. Run for it, run for it. Anyway. So then she pretty much accuses Cat and Sip was part of, they were playing from the troll farm, right? And TJ like, but Jag, you knew that. What? So then <laughs> Jag then goes to say, you know, my girl Yolanda, shout out to Yolanda the Great. 
and that Miss Cat was working against Bruno. I remember, I believe it or not, y'all used to watch tonight when he used to have his call, his uh, clubhouse people on his panels, and he used to have about three, four hundred people in his chat, and his lives used to actually be entertaining because they would be up there acting a fool. We had the one drunk lady Gigi up there, and she'll be entertaining us with just acting a fool. And I remember when Cat and them came along. Now I don't remember Yolanda, but I do remember Cat. Girl, nobody was plotting and planning against that nigga. He's just not a likable person. I digress. Jack then goes to say that um, Jack says she's going to win her lawsuit against YouTube and TJ chimes in that she knows and that she should join it because people lives have been in danger. Y'all shut the fuck up with them mouths. People wouldn't want to put paws on y'all. I'm just saying. Jack then says that people have died. Who Jack? Girl who? Can you let us know? Can you name the people that don't have that died off YouTube. Now, I've heard of some things happen, but these are people who talked about people, dox people, and then these people caught them in the street. But Jack, who you know personally? So the TJ said that she reached out to a social media attorney, pretty much asking, and the, the social media attorney was like, did somebody die? And she like, dang, somebody got to die for y'all to do something? I guess so. Hmm. So then Jack goes to say how now YouTube got special rules only that applies to her. Bitch, you're not that special, Jay. You might be special, Ed, girl, but you're not special. You just, you keep breaking the community guidelines, girl, and people keep flagging you and you keep doing false flags, girl. They're going to keep snatching your channels. And bitch, you're not going to be happy until somebody snatch that IP address and to the point where your whole fucking computer and phone can't get on this shit. And I hope that's what they do. So then while they, they start talking about Goomba, so while they're talking about Goomba over on his channel, TJ blurts out, fuck it, we should go on a blue couch and tell it all. This remedial bitch wants to get on real life so bad. She wants real life. I hope real life do sit down with her. I don't know why I feel like that's not going to get good views. Like she's not going to bring views like everybody else. But girl, it'd be some good commentary. Let's see if she, let's see. <laughs> Girl. let's see which which one of her subscribers gonna buy her outfit for the blue couch hmm. Hmm. so then jab brings up and she's like well i don't know what's going on with day day you know because he said he's single and he don't have time for a relationship with you jag he doesn't have time for a relationship with you jaguar he has time just like sip he eats the cooch he just don't eat your cooch jag Men will marry women, but they just won't marry you, Jag. You should have stayed with Goomba. Because no man's going to ever marry you from this point on, girl. Unless he's, like, crazy like you, I guess. Or senile. Hmm. So then Jag brings up that Kimmy, right? And how now Kimmy, people have Kimmy address. And that she has, now Kimmy has to worry about getting docs. Now, when I started hearing this, I'm like, so this is why Kimmy responded the way she did. Because of how T, how reckless TJ was talking. I think Kimmy should have went harder on TJ ass later that uh, today. But whatever. Uh, she goes to say, um, TJ goes to say that Kimmy asked her why Jag did do that. Like, you know, put out her address. TJ responses, she don't know. But she says to Jag... And I really wasn't going to tell Kimmy shit verbatim. Her words, not mine. And how she's going to have to find out on her own, you raggedy bitch. That's, that's what she said about Kimmy. And that's why Kimmy wanted, she was summoning TJ to that damn link. Jag then asked that Kimmy was also asking her. Well, Jag goes to ask that Kimmy was asking her about her and homie's sex life. TJ interjects and says, yo, she was asking me that too. And asked if she missed Jag and that she was going to give her laptop and get her hair done. Baby, loose lips will sink ships, won't they? When I, I told y'all they were cackling. Didn't I tell y'all that they was cackling? Just cackling the fuck away. So then, um, in the middle of all that, TJ does call her ugly ass bitch. Then TJ, what the fuck are you then? Somebody care to explain to me? Cause TJ definitely ain't Miss Miss USA. D TJ definitely is not like a looker. What 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 they say? She she's a she's basic at best. She's like a, a five at best. Girl, the audacity of these two. 
So then Jack states that how no one finds it funny that, that how like how come nobody finds it funny that Naisha always appears around holidays with a wish list, and TJ busts out laughing. No comment. <laughs> no comment. So then Jack states that Naisha made it out like a fat rat on YouTube, pretty much because Naisha is doing better than both them bitches. She doing both better than both them bitches. Mm hmm. That's what you hoes get. Okay. So then she goes, uh, they was going back and forth and discussing how like TJ was still helping Naisha in the beginning after the breakup, yada, yada, yada. So then they go to mention how Pam was sending them money and TJ was taking the money that Pam was sending Jag and TJ and sending some of that to Naisha, Naisha and I guess her, you know, her family and how the first time Naisha was on a live, if you go back to when I guess Sean Davy Way live or official King Payne, one of their lives, how she said she's going to pimp her pain. Let me tell you something. If if you listen to Naisha's story and I did commentary on this, she had threesomes with TJ to keep her happy. TJ was they were homeless in a homeless shelter, and TJ was still fucking around on Naisha with another person in the homeless shelter. If I put up with all of that for eleven years, bitch, and you didn't leave me from some another bum, a bum bitch, I would probably pimp out my pain too. I ain't going to hold it because that's some bullshit right there. So then TJ says that she couldn't be mad at Jack for walking away, you know, because she one thing she did learn when it's over is over. Like when I say TJ was, you could say, yeah, y'all right. Y'all were right. Y'all were right. TJ definitely missed Jack. And if Jack was able to tell TJ she wanted her back, TJ would go. She would, she would, she would leave that girl. Whoever this wifey is, she would leave that girl for Jack. I guarantee it. You could hear it in her voice in this recording. Okay. Uh-huh. So then Jack tells TJ to keep an eye out on Stacy B. TJ states that she already know that she learned a lot from Jack and that Jack is her protege. Mm-hmm. Y'all heard right. This person right here who had it shaped like a fucking turtle is TJ's protege. And so while they're rambling, TJ suddenly asks if the if she's being recorded, saying that she don't want to have to deal with the bullshit the next day. Girl, shouldn't you have asked that when the conversation first started if you was being recorded? I want y'all to remember that statement about her being recorded and asking Jag if she's being recorded because later on it comes up when she hits Kimmy's live and we're going to get into that, okay? So this video might be a little longer than usual, but just please bear in because you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed y'all, Okay. So then Jag lies and say that anything she has done has benefit Jag. Girl, bye. It has done nothing but not benefit Jag. It has benefit TJ. Girl, bye. It has done nothing but make TJ life more miserable. And TJ knew it because she got quiet and said nothing because it's not true. But she don't want to tell Jag. Whoo. She told TJ that she needs to worry about when the camera stop rolling and when no one's worried about her, a, S, a black SUV will pull up and start to interrogate you. When I say she used scare tactics to control people, child jack started to push again for tj to call real life and she was like you know what i'm saying he can help that can help you get on your feet and tj was like yeah i'm gonna call him in the morning so i don't know y'all y'all might want to look out for that blue couch we might be seeing nappy headed uh uh dusty ass tj and i don't see why y'all been getting on her ass i was trying to be nice but my bad i was wrong i should have been dragging this bitch the whole time too uh-huh y'all uh -huh, y'all mm-hmm so then TJ says that she went and she was like reminiscing and looking back at old videos. Uh, well, an a old video of her and Jack. Yeah, she misses Jack, child. I wouldn't be surprised if these two dumbasses end up back together, child. Dumb and dumber. Mm -hmm. So then uh, Jack then... Um, Jag and TJ, they go on and on. They're talking about Danny. Like, like, like y'all have to listen. I wasn't going to do all the notes for that. They just go on and on and on. Like, they're the ones that were coming off obsessed, especially Jack, like, really obsessed. It was a little airy. So then they both go to say how Nisha time will be coming up soon. Jag then goes to say that the troll farm are the ones who put Legina onto her. Girl, I was in OKP's live the moment he was talking to her, and she introduced y'all formally. And then you sat there talking about some until the lie, the, the DNA tests come out. I do declare I'm gonna take her under my wing and I'm gonna treat her like she one of us. Am I the only one who's seen that? 
And Legina like, yeah, you know, I would, they would really like it because I'm Aaliyah and R. Kelly's daughter. And I do the Kaya. If that's what you say you all dare, then that's what you are. That's what the fuck Jack said. So how did you get set up by Legina? Bitch, you jumped on Legina's train and rode her coattail. Did you not, Jack? Because everybody was talking about Legina on YouTube at that time. And you sat there and drugged that girl around this month. Okay, it's not that type of video, but okay. I'm going to keep up with the notes because there's a lot more. So then she goes to say out her own mouth, child. Now listen, this is all allegedly. This is all allegedly. Somebody, one of my subscribers, let me know. I hear you. So I'm going to say it first. Trigger warning. This is all alleged. Okay. Jack says out her own mouth that Genesis is a predator, allegedly. I'm saying allegedly. And stated that Legina outed Genesis over a year ago, I guess when Jack was first going to Vegas. So then Jack goes to tell a story how some young girl she had took in at the time, they were one night drinking, and then she woke up in the middle of the night with DJ, DJ Genesis on top of her, and that she didn't want to say something because she was afraid she'd get put out because she had nowhere to go. Jack, you're disgusting. Whether that's true or not, I don't remember ever hearing something like that. But bitch, you disgusting to put that type of allegation on somebody. And if Legina said it, can somebody please show me to where video? Because I that never crossed my path. But I digress. That's just horrible. So then she goes that that she stated that Genesis did not deny it. And that this whole conversation happened all on coffee. Y'all do what y'all want with that information. I that's I'm moving on. I'm moving on from that one because I don't I don't do I don't do allegations like that. That shit not cool. So baby, why this car? Jack coughing her ass off again. Mm -hmm. Do that recording as well. Coughing up a fucking lung. You know the same lung she was mad that I addressed with that cat. Yeah, that shit was funny. So baby. Jack just keeps going on and on about unmasking Danny and that Danny was Monica the Avatar and how when Monica Avatar got exposed by Nosy Ho, she left and then Danny came around and took Nosy down. Child. That was like, it was a long conversation. Y'all have to, it was, if you did, you know what I'm talking about. So then she's like pretty much um listening to her trying to solve out who's who is really funny though like it is very comical because like she really over there be on her expect the gadget carmen san diego type shit she really do <laughs> like she over there trying to figure out who this lady is child y'all done pissed off danny y'all y'all know danny got striked and supposedly it was um ayasha who did it and when danny video live came down she came back supposedly the name she used to do the strike everybody know as ayasha so y'all niggas in trouble so of course tj is like she don't remember any of it she don't remember when at2 did the song about the monica avatar and i'm like see what i'm saying bitch you ain't even been around long enough but you telling us who's been around I, oh i can't stand you bitches <laughs> so then they start going back and forth for a minute like they was getting ready to have an argument themselves because you know it was all about sean and okp and how like they brought tj and legina into her life and how she's trying to say that they are that tj is also part of the troll farm tj's like look i'm not gonna argue with you she goes to pretty much clears it up and say jay no you're the one who brought me into your life you're the one who brought me into all this youtube stuff so then tj asked her about tulsa like is tulsa cool she goes you know jack pause and hesitate but she goes well you know she's not evil and then she said well would you trust her and jack is like i will tell you not to trust anyone but all she know is tulsa is not evil and so then tj wonders why people and i'm like tj you wonder why people be on your ass girl you really be wondering why motherfuckers be like dragging you that's crazy that's real crazy like how she be acting so we pretty much learned from the man himself, Jaguar Wright, that he is the one who, who gave Tulsa Big Homie's phone number. I'm not surprised. So in this recording, she pretty much busts out that she is the one that was responsible for why Tulsa was able to get in contact with Big Homie. Because she's the one. She's like, if I was so in love with him, why would I give Tulsa his number? And I'm like, girl, I guess, girl. So then... I think TJ was pretty much riding her job this whole entire recording child. So then TJ pretty much believes that Kimmy told 
she's the one who told um Kimmy told where TJ was staying and that it was during her apology tour. These are Alex. This is what alleged. She, she just feels like, okay, the only reason why people know where I live is because Kimmy told Danny. Speculation, by the way, speculation. Okay, so then the, the recording pretty much in the baby. Mm -hmm. Lean in, lean in. Okay, we almost finished. Lean in. Kimmy went live, child, and it went down on Kimmy's, okay? It went down. So Kimmy goes live. She's calling TJ on the phone, child. She was live calling and calling. The first time she did call, we'll say TJ. The second time, TJ answered. And she answered a call. And Kimmy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you call me a raggedy bitch. Like, you had all this shit to say. TJ, being TJ, playing a victim, answered a call saying that she has other things going on in her life. And then she just hung up. She said in the recording, she asked Jack, are you recording me? Because I if you, I don't want to have to deal with this tomorrow. Bitch, you knew it was coming. So Kimmy let us know like, well, TJ is still in love with Jack. She is. You can hear it in that recording. She definitely is. She was like, that's what TJ told her. And she was like, I don't understand how TJ got a whole wifey and she's still in love with Jack. So then Kimmy calls TJ again. And she does answer. So then TJ tells Kimmy that she'll hit her link, but not for $25. Because she got a hotel room that's 60 so she need more money. Kimmy asks TJ, well, has she ever, um, have I ever had a problem helping you before getting a room? TJ responds, yeah. She said, you did, Kimmy. When you and Eso Esoteric fell out, Kimmy all of a sudden told her, like, no, nah, bitch, I can't help you. Kimmy, you too nice sometimes. I, I don't, you, and here's the thing. You're not too nice. You're just too nice to the wrong people. You're way too nice to the wrong people. So then Kimmy goes to tell TD that she don't owe her shit, which she don't, and that she could have people at her door for talking to her crazy. She said, bitch, you better watch how you talking to me because I got people down in Dallas that be on your motherfucker dog. I said, ooh, chap. <laughs> so then... I'm like, Kimmy played this video on her live of her approaching this man in the Dollar General who was driving a hearse and was inside Dollar General picking up cards, child. And when she played this, I read the chat and people just like, Kimmy, that was too dangerous, child. And girl, that, that was hood as fuck. That man was in there buying cars and she went in there asking was somebody in the back of the hearse and that somebody mama could be in that hearse. <laughs> Yo, I ain't gonna lie. My, I was laughing. I ain't gonna hold y'all. Because <laughs> I ain't never seen no shit like that before. So then Kimmy gets back on DJ, gets T TJ back on the phone and asks her, you know, why did you say those things about me? TJ said, you know, all I did was call you a bitch. No, you didn't, girl. You got an ugly, called her a raggedy ass. She told her that she was, you was talking shit, girl. You was talking shit. Mm -hmm. That's why she called your ass. And that she's aware that Jag be recording her. It's just a matter of if she's going to put it out due to Jag not putting out other recordings. So what I took away is first she asked her in the recording, are you recording me? But then she says, well, she's aware that Jag does recordings. It's just the fact that if she's going to put that particular recording out when she records you, because there's other conversations that TJ and Jag has had that Jag has not put out. Again, these two cackling bitches is talking behind the scene. And they told us. TJ goes to say that she's been devaluing herself when she hit other people's link. Girl, blah. <laughs> That's what she told Kimmy. And so then, child Jack eventually hits Kimmy's panel to address some things. She said she had three things to address, but she only addressed one child. You know, you know Jack can't count or read. And she says, some of the things is with a picture of her and a uh, picture with a picture and she come up on there with a picture of her uh, and sip because sip was on a panel let me bring that up sip was on the panel and so she comes up on there with that inappropriate nasty picture where her bottom teeth and her mouth looking like that is it's in um sip hitting it from the back so i'm like she's doing that to make him feel uncomfortable and so she hits it and then jack starts that she um she has accepted the boxing challenge with Kimmy and that John is setting up the boxing challenge. But due to the age, he's right now looking into insurance. 
girl until we know for sure and we see some kind of proof we ain't gonna believe you but baby i'm telling you kimmy gonna whoop jag ass jag is overcompensating herself so then Kimmy was like, well, John needs to get in touch with me then. So baby, when I say Kimmy played that part with that man Terrence getting Jack to the airport, if you heard the recording, that man, you can say what you want, it was embarrassing. That man was trying to get Jack out that car. The reason why that man's mama rode in that car with him dropping Jack off at that airport, she wanted to make sure that she don't try to sweet talk his ass to get him to turn that car back around. So that mama sat in that back seat, which was weird. Because Jag should have been in the back seat. I would never let my make my mother sit in the back seat. Unless it's like my husband or wife. Even then, it's like that's just weird to me. I was raised differently. You just never let the elderly sit in the back seat. But unless the mama wanted to sit there, that's different. But man, that man wanted her out. He cut that music off, said, Can you please get out the car? Like she was a police officer, like he was a police officer. And then he didn't want to give her a hug. She had to tell him and request him to come back to give her a hug. But yeah, we we the crazy ones, okay? So then Jack starts getting frantic, honey, because she cannot stand when you clock her about a man, child. So then Sip and Jack starts to argue. And Jack, when Jack calls him a boy, Sip just started saying and repeating, you dry ass pussy bitch, you dry pussy bitch, and you dry ass pussy bitch. And he just kept saying it over and over and how her pussy was dry. And then he said, just like her mouth, so I'm like, Jay, you was out here sucking dick with a dry mouth, girl. That, I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah. <laughs> so then Jack trying to get that man, Terrence and Big, Big Homie, to fall out. Because he's saying, she lying, saying like, yeah, he said this. Like, Terrence said this and this about you. When I say Jag is no good, Jag really is no good. She will have two people fighting, ready to take each other's heads off, off of lies. But I think the men are smarter than that. Jack then threatens that she knows Big Homie's mom, child, and that he she will be calling that mama. Now, I do remember Jack saying she had the sister's phone number, but she wasn't going to use it. I don't know. But I think that's a coward-ass move. Jack then throws out there that if Big Homie's dick was so good, then why his ex leaving for a stud? Girl, the same reason why everybody leave you, bitch. The same reason. Whatever that reason is, bitch, it's the same reason. Mm -hmm. So then Kat hits the panel and she pretty much like, leave my name out y'all shit. You know what I'm saying? So while we alive, while they're alive, yo, we all of a sudden again hear that Jaguar right. And I actually struck Danny's live while she was live at the time. And so I go over there and I check and Danny did end up going back live. But Danny was pissed. You could tell. And supposedly the name, I think is Trina. Was it Trina or Tracy? It was one of them. I think it was Trina. But they're saying that's the name that Ayasha uses when she do strikes because she have strikes before. So, girl, you in danger, girl. Ayasha, Jay. I, I mean, maybe they just feel like nothing can happen to them, girl. But the way Daddy hopped off that live, I would hate to be y'all. So then Jack hits Kimmy Pennell one more time throughout this live. And she's like, she's at her barber. And she's like, this is my barber. Y'all keep talking to everybody like, bitch, we don't talk about your barber, girl. We talk about how you look stupid, but we don't talk about your barber. Then she tried to bring up like Kat and how Kat was flirting with him. They all jumped. They got the screaming and yelling and all hell broke loose. And she just goes to say that Kimmy channels next to get striped. But then she drops and we don't see no more from her. And so TJ must don't want supporters. And let me tell you why. The main reason, because the reason why TJ even started getting supporters is because she loved Jack. Right. And the supporters don't like when TJ deal with Jag because the whole purpose of them is helping her is because they feel sorry for her and they want her to get back on her feet after Jag. But now we're learning that um, TJ supporters, if you're watching this, I know, you know, y'all going to make excuses for her, but I need y'all to just be smart. OK, be wise about it. She still interacts with Jag. Meaning at some point, she's going to start sending y'all money to Jag. Don't say I didn't tell you. And I walked away with this. TJ's clearly not the victim, child. She's not the victim. Her and Jag was up there just cackling like two bitties, two bitter-ass homeless bum bitches. They was up there just talking, 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 talking about everybody. Jag was just fishing for information. TJ was falling for it because she's a sucker. 
And that was just pretty it. That was long. I'm not going to keep y'all any longer. <laughs> I hope y'all stuck it out to the end. Because if you did, you ain't real one. But let me know down below in the comments. Like, did y'all hear it? Were y'all impressed? I wasn't impressed. It was really kind of dull and boring if you ask me. But it's funny to see these two up there chit-chatting and kick a and all that shit. After how Jag did TJ. But I got another video for that. So you know how we do over here? I hope everyone enjoy the solar eclipse. Enjoy your week and smooches.